Greetings one and all. I've been having a lot of debate with people about the difference between exoteric and esoteric. I want to stress here that my channel and my shows are about the esoteric. The exoteric is what keeps us caught up in the mundane world. The esoteric takes us into the other realms that really exist and helps us with our connection to the divine. The scientists of today don't necessarily understand the esoteric side of the cosmos, the universe. They look at it from an exoteric, find the answer, this is it kind of way. Though they are continually researching, I like to remind everyone that in the ancient past, science and religion worked together as one topic, one theme. Scientists, religious people were trying to find how God, or the divine source, made the universe work, how the earth went round. Whereas now, the modern day scientists are all about, let's find out how the world works, how the human works, how the animal kingdom works and such like, but they do not add the spiritual element to it, which is what my shows are about, adding the spiritual element. I do not really, I look, actually, I'm going to say I do look into science. I watch the scientific programs. I try to understand how they've come to their understanding of how the universe works. But I always feel there's something lacking, and that is the divine connection. But towards the future, what's an ongoing battle is obviously against the dark forces. There is a spiritual war going on, which no scientist is going to agree with. And most people don't. Most of the materialistic people of this world do not understand that their materialistic way of thinking is densifying our earth and is making it more of a, well, a densifying, a darker realm that is not connecting with the divine. The divine is the love and light. The continual, unconditional love can only work if everybody opens up their hearts. It's always out there, but most people have their hearts shut off and are blinkered to what is happening in this spiritual war. They're too busy trying to get by in life and pay their bills and, uh, I don't know, just live their days, survive the rat race, or what Rudolf Steiner would say, living in this lunatic asylum. Actually, you no, know, Gurdjieff said that lunatic asylum. Rudolf Steiner would talk about how it's uh, turning into a very materialistic, secular realm that is losing its connection with the spiritual realms and the other beings of this planet. And he and Gurdjieff both say there is consciousness in everything. Everything has a certain degree of consciousness. doesn't need to have a brain but it can have a life impulse, which means that it has a consciousness. Very different to our own, us human beings. But one of the things that I am concerned about is that people seem very unaware about this spiritual war and how the dark forces are trying to take over the realm, the world. And from the Rudolf Steiner point of view, he talks about how Araman and Lucifer, who are the adversarial forces, and the coming Azuras, so I do wonder if they're already here, who work for the Antichrist, are trying to build a world that is against the divine. They're trying to create a realm where there is no spiritual feeling, thinking, or way. It's all about densifying again I'm talking about densifying whereas a divine world would be a light world according to Gurdjieff and Steiner one day in the far far future our world should be turning into a sun and a sun is light and us humans are developing and evolving at the same time as well we will become angels of light if we work upon ourselves but one of the concerns is that the dark forces are trying their best to stop that and they will probably come through the machines, according to Rudolf Steiner. He does warn us of this. He talks about how all the different elemental beings, again, this is something the scientists would never dream or even want to discuss, all the elemental beings that work in everything that we deal with, 
and I would recommend for those that also poo poo this read Terry Pratchett's Discworld series where he talks about in the Discworld how all the elemental beings are the ones that make all the machinery work and it's a good book Terry Pratchett's Discworld series they show us a very warped <laughs> version of our life maybe but our life is warped this planet is warped but Steiner is concerned about how the Aramanic and Luciferic beings will try to make us their slaves. Perhaps we won't see this coming. They do it in a very clever, sly way, even though we should be being sly ourselves. This is a different form of slyness. And Steiner gives us a stark warning about the future. And he says, and this is a, uh, I'm going to do some quotes now. This is from a lecture that is not yet available in English, I believe, but someone has translated some of it for me. This is from GA255B. If anyone knows if this is available in English, please let me know and send it to me. So this is just a snippet from it. And so I'll read full quote and then I'm going to go over what I, what I read into this. Quote, And we can already see, when we had the capacity for such perception, how the elemental spirits of the lower realms, the realms of earth, water and air, have passed the resolution, so to speak, to make the earth into something that is not suitable for the human being. These elemental spirits have decided to turn the human being gradually more or less into a machine, and to make the earth into something fundamentally different from that which is ripe for, its, for his earthly existence. That form of the earth which I had to portray when I undertook to describe in my outline of occult science the evolution of the world as it was intended, so to say by the beings which were there at the beginning of this evolution. That form is one which these elemental beings do not want. All these elemental beings of the lower realms want to drill themselves as an army led by Araman. And inasmuch as man's intellect is degenerating, and he is not illuminating through spirituality. This intellect he has developed, so will man's decline in intellect be deviated by these elemental spirits. These spirits are, as it were, if I may so express myself, a lot cleverer in, the, in their congresses than we in ours, and by their deviation of it, this human intellectual activity will be led over into the Earth's Aramanic intellectual activity. As for those elemental spirits that live in the etheric and are attaching themselves to Lucifer, they also want to add their efforts to this alienation of the Earth. Let me put it this way. The lower elemental beings want to harden and vibrate through and enweb the earthly element in a manner that is different from what should take place for the benefit of human beings. The higher elemental beings want to confer upon that which has been vibrated and forged by the lower ones, a character such that it can radiate out into the cosmos. In that which these beings would fashion, the human being could only pursue his evolution as, so to say, a kind of vermin on the planet that would take form in this way. End quote. So Stein is here saying that if humanity doesn't get back on board with the divine plan, we will end up being the vermin of this planet. We will be the slaves of the elemental beings and the machines of Araman and Luciferic forces and the machines that they will create. They will work through. They're getting us to build them, the coming AI and the way we're all connected to our phones and our laptops. We seem to be just looking down into black mirrors all the time rather than looking out onto this world and becoming the divine human beings we should be working on. We're not helping with our own evolution if we're distracted by the TV, if we're distracted by our phones, distracted by the black mirrors. And what did alchemists used to work with in the olden days? Black mirrors. What did occultists used to work with? Black mirrors, trying to open portals to all kinds of things. But going back to the beginning, he talks about how the elemental spirits of the lower realms, the realms of earth, water and air, have passed a resolution. So this is all the little folk that most people just think about in fairy tales these days. The, the gnomes, the sylphs, the undines that all live in these various 
uh, earthly realms, the watery realms, the air realms. And Steiner said that we should have been working with them. And if we worked with them, they would be happy to work with us. They're always looking for someone to work with to help with the evolution of this lovely planet and ourselves and their own evolution because they should be evolving as well. But since we seem to be ignoring them now as we live in this secular world where people just think of these beings as being just characters in fairy tales, characters in stories, these beings are looking for other people to work with, or other beings, which is why they you know, have gone to the adversarial forces. And Lucifer and Araman will use them to help bring down our downfall and take control of us. He talks about how these elemental spirits have decided to turn the human being gradually more or less into a machine, which is what's happening. We are becoming machines and they're trying the transhumanism, AI connection, you know, neural link and all that kind of thing, preparing for us all to become cyborgs so that we live forever. Even though I don't think this is going to work, I don't understand how our soul and conscience and our consciousness can go into these beings. These are just going to be programmed versions of ourselves, but it won't be, I believe, us in them. Please see my book, Monkey Mind, Robot Body, for all that, where I discuss this kind of thing. I don't understand how they're going to be able to bring the soul out of our bodies and put it into a cyborg robotic machine. But maybe instead they will find a way of keeping us still as an all, uh, organism, a uh, human being, but with, like the Borg in Star Trek, adaptations or added to us. You know, we might get that robotic leg when our knee stops working and that those robotic bionic eyes like Steve Austin when our eyes start failing us. So that way they would still be keeping our soul in our body, which of course is part of the Dark Forces plan. They are here to capture our souls. Steiner's book, Outline of Occult Science, describes how we humans should be developing and evolving and the whole divine plan of our evolution back up towards the divine, becoming angels, archangels, archai and so on. So on. But that's not going to happen if we stay being materialistic, secular people. We are not then connecting with the divine cosmic love. We are in a different kind of uh, attachment for this earth and trying to live forever so we can continue our materialistic lives. So I do recommend the outline of occult science to read to understand the cosmology and the cosmogony and the evolution of humanity. But he goes on to warn us in this quote that I was given earlier, all these elemental beings of the lower realms want to drill themselves as an army led by Araman. And Araman's plan is to keep us trapped here. Though there is also the discussion of keeping us trapped in the ape sphere. Maybe he's going to bring the ape sphere into this earth realm and keep us trapped here. And they go, he goes on, Steiner goes on to talk about man's intellect is degenerating. Well, the, having these machines and using our phones and everything at the tip of our fingers on the old uh, search engines of the internet does stop us using our intellect. We don't go and learn things for ourselves now. We don't illumine our brains and minds with our own discoveries, which does create a different energy to just being told things. And I have many people on like the various one-to-ones I do that want to be told the answers rather than pondering and working upon them themselves because that creates a different energy within us and then we can start illuminating our hearts, souls and minds by doing this kind of work. It's nice to be help and discuss with other people the various different ways of developing oneself and become attuned to the harmony of the universe but just giving it to you on a plate means you don't put in the effort or the work. You're just given the answers. And it doesn't mean you're necessarily going to do what you're supposed to do. Because if you've given the answers, you probably won't walk the path that gets you there. The path is just as important as the destination. And I often remind people that knowledge is great, but knowledge needs to be turned into wisdom. If you don't turn that knowledge into wisdom, 
it will just deteriorate. And this is what's happening with our everyday world. The knowledge is deteriorating because it's so easy to get the knowledge now and so just at a click of a button we get the knowledge, the answers that we want but we don't get the wisdom that explains why we need this. So Steiner is warning us that man's intelligence, the intellect is declining. And then he goes on to warn us that the elemental realm and the Araman and Lucifer, their intellect is not declining. In fact, it's getting cleverer and cleverer. You know, they're evolving like we are. I'm quite concerned about all these different UFO sightings over the last hundred plus years. And before that, we have proof that they've been around for many times. I truly believe that these are demonic beings in these spaceships or UFOs or whatever. They're making technology as well, maybe not at the same kind of type of technology we are. And Steiner was saying in that quote that I gave, the lower elemental beings want to harden and vibrate through and enweb the earthly element in a manner that is different from what should take place for the benefit of human beings. So vibrations are very important. I've discussed this in various shows of we need to get onto the right vibrations. But we can feel in this world as we walk about it. Things are not right, are they? Everything's vibrating at the wrong pulse. And definitely during the Shichu of 2020, there was a fear vibration that was so dense and took over the world. And that knocked a lot of people off their spiritual perch or probably stopped them finding um, a spiritual path from it because they were so frightened. Though, on the other hand, it also woke a lot of people up enough to start looking into the spiritual ways of working with oneself and who one is. But that then brings people, a lot of people can see there's a spiritual war going on and they want to take up arms, where the divine is not about taking up arms, it's about forgiveness, 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 redemption, and helping those that are against us to find their path back to the divine. It was Michaelmas at the end of September, and I did the little show on showing the show, well, showing the show, of Michael, Saint Michael, Archangel Michael, redeems the devil. He holds out his hand to help the devil get back on his feet and find his way back to God. And we can do that within ourselves, we find the Michaelic or Michael vibration within ourselves to help redeem our lower self, our lower vibrations where we are caught up in the materialistic world. We're bringing down the higher to subdue the lower, to redeem the lower. And in a way that is a conquering, but we're not here to fight it. We're here to teach it to transform it, it's all in our chemical process. Steiner reminds us that the higher elemental be beings want to confer upon that which has been vibrated and forged by the lower ones, a character such that it can radiate out into the cosmos. We want to become shining lights of love, unconditional love, cosmic love, universal love, one love, the love that is the divine connection and not the seven loves that the Greek philosophers used to talk about. They are earthly loves. We're talking about the, well, the divine love, the love that conquers all love, the redemptive love, the love that Christ brought to us to open into our hearts. And we've all got a little shard, a little piece of Christ within our hearts that we need to connect to so that we can open up that cosmic love vibration. And Steiner warns us that if we fall for the dark forces deception and are led down the wrong path, we will become the vermin on this planet. We will end up being the vermin that is struggling to survive. Look up what the word vermin means. What is vermin to most people? And this is because the dark forces will take over the world and start to rule in their own dark glory. And because they've conquered us, who are the divines chosen to become the next set of angels, 
they will do their best to corrupt us, to take us down the wrong path, lead us astray. But in a sly way, we won't see this coming, or people don't see this coming. Only those waking up are seeing what the dark forces are up to and how they're trying to confuse, misdirect, and harden our hearts by distracting us from our spiritual, soulful work that we should be doing. Steiner says that the only way to avoid this is for humanity to decide to give its attention to the fact that a wave of spirituality is seeking to enter our earthly evolution. That this wave of spirituality is seeking to guide us to feel and to behold the Christ impulse in the form in which it must be felt and beheld at the present time. End quote. And that is very important. But what is the dark world doing? The dark sources are trying to ridicule Christ. They come out with all these different versions of who Jesus the man was. They have so many different versions of Christian teachings these days that they're trying to modify the story of Christ. They want to put an exoteric spin on the story of Christ when we need to look at it from a deeper point of view of his message of love. Love, love, love. That's what we need. And that's what our man and Lucifer will distract us with, with false types of love. The seven types of Greek philosophical love they will confuse with the cosmic love. And we can see that going on today. People are always looking for love. Teenagers are struggling to find the one, their soulmate and such like. We have definitely confusion over what sexual activities are. Many people confuse love with sex, thinking that they will get love from having sex. I'm not saying sex is wrong. I'm just saying that people are misusing what sex is. Thankfully, there are people out there that are in love, proper love, and have been together all their lives and still have a loving relationship. But what Steiner is reminding us from the lecture GA202, quote, At present man pours his spirit into matter, into machines, and it works on in them in such a way that, for example, every human being in Germany had beside him a horse constructed by human intelligence, but which was not a horse, it was machine power. It has been separated off from the human being, just as the elemental beings were once separated off, but in a different sense. They separated off in such a way that the human being had to approach them through the luciferic force in him. He is now using his aromanic force. He is now aromanizing <laughs> things, mechanizing things. We are living in an aromanically empoisoned age. Human beings are completely oblivious to the fact that they are removing themselves from the world and that they are embodying their intelligence into the world, thereby creating next to themselves a world that is becoming independent of them, end quote. Which is very true. We, you know, take the word horse out and put your car or your laptop or your computer next to it. We are separating ourselves off from the earth. And I could see that in so many different ways. It doesn't just have to be from the computers. I see people concreting their gardens over so they can park all their two, three, four cars that each household seems to have now. They're not staying connected to nature and the Mother Earth. Steiner goes on to say, Thus the aromanizing of the world makes forecasting the outcome of these events into a matter of mere calculation. End quote. He's talking about what's going to happen. The way people are turning is the dark forces are going to slyly <laughs> show us a new way of living that will seem comfortable. They will provide everything for everyone to live in a materialistic world and you won't have any need for developing yourselves. Kind of like in the Matrix, if you watch the Matrix movies and Neo asked why they kept it at, I think they were set it in recent times. Why did they choose that time to keep everybody in the uh, delusion, the illusion? Because apparently that was the happiest times we were, living materially, making money and having jobs and going out shopping all the time and dis 
disconnecting from the divine source because it does take effort to work with the divine. We're lazy human beings. <laughs> Materialists and secularists, they see this as a great way to live, aiming every day to make that buck, aiming every day to get that what they need for their house, just to have that bit of satisfaction, when really those that are on a spiritual path can see that things are degenerating, degenerating into an aimless, empty life. But the materialists don't understand that. They don't see how empty our lives are without the rich feeling senses coming from the divine source and that satisfying relationship when we are connected to our esoteric paths, following our true spiritual progress. And he goes on to say actually later, material progress is not the source of spiritual life, but real spiritual progress can take place when the economic life is not restricted or repressed. The, econ end quote, the economic life does not need to be restricted or repressed if everyone gets to eat, if everybody can be fed, if we don't have homeless people and people starving and hungry or struggling to keep warmth. But that again is because we have the wrong people in charge in the governments, wrong people trying to control our lives. And that's probably people led by dark forces, where if we could get the right kind of people, as Steiner says, I think he was talking about if we can get groups of 12 together, all meditating on this with intention, we can fix the world. But are there 12 people out there to start such a circle? Really what we need to do is to not just resurrect the being or the belief in Christ and his true message, but we also need to help resurrect humanity back on the path it should be on. It's evolution to become the divine human that will then become an angel, that will then become an archangel, rather than a degenerated human who is going to be caught up in the machinery that is run by the dark forces. We don't want to be the vermin of this planet. We want to be those that care and live on this planet with the other beings, whether they're elementals, animals, you know, the fish, the birds, the plant life and such like, so that we can all work together on this divine path. It all sounds a bit preachy, doesn't it? But if we really looked into our hearts, we know that this is the way forward. Humanity is lazy. And if they can find an easy way out of an easy way of life, then they'll go for it. And that's what Lucifer and Araman, even though it's a difficult path, that's what they offer. So keep together your love, light and life. And hopefully you can think about what Steiner and Gurdjieff are telling us. I'm sure that's the only reason you'll be watching this channel is because you're following your spiritual soulful path. We want to make the world a Christ world. I'm not saying everyone needs to become following the Christian faith like a Catholic faith or a Protestant faith. They, you know, these institutional versions of religion have misunderstood what it was that the Christ was saying. No, they still have an underlying understanding <laughs> that it's all to do with love. We need to just find the Christ within ourselves in our hearts. Not I, but Christ in me. Thank you for watching, listening, and I always appreciate your comments. Thank you those that press the thank you buttons. I appreciate the donations as well. My books are available through my website or on Amazon, and Monkey Mind Robot Body is the book that is all about whether or not we can become cyborgs. Stay in your hearts, people.